Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 9 January 2017. And I thought I would do a video tonight on this knife. I'm not really going to call it a review. I'm just going to call it a, <laughs> a show and tell. An explanation, perhaps. You guys who follow me on Instagram and Facebook and who have been watching videos on this channel over the last couple of days recognize this knife. <clears throat> this is a knife that uh, that was made on the island of Misfit Toys in Escanaba, Michigan, the shop of Jesse Hemphill of Uncle Jesse's Knives. To recap, if you watched my interview with Jesse, I showed up there last Thursday evening and you know, we were kind of walking around the shop, getting reacquainted, looking at some of the stuff Jesse was working on. He had a pile of uh, forged Damascus steel knife blade blanks. And he handed me the pile and he said, pick one of those out. And uh, I looked through them. Most of them were looking like, you know, seven to nine inch knife blade blanks. And I saw this... Uh, little slender shorter one in the mix and it tripped something in my brain you see over the last few months I've been playing around in my mind and drawing on paper a slender fixed blade clip point knife that could be carried every day if you like to carry a fixed blade knife small, slim, but with enough handle to accommodate, you know, a large sized glove hand like mine in a variety of grips. And it didn't take me long to draw this knife blade on that blank with a Sharpie. The blank accommodated the design in my mind's eye very well. So this knife blade is out of 143 thousandths thick Frankensteel Damascus and Frankensteel Damascus is a term that Jesse coined. He took some of uh, Zoe Christ's Damascus end cuts sort of off fall or scrap pieces and he reforge welded them into some random patterns and uh, we just never know quite what we're going to get inside these chunks of steel and this pattern is a little different from side to side I'm left handed and I kind of like the left handed show side we've got sort of this epicenter of activity here and then it looks like shooting out of it is this sort of straight line of fire you know it's kind of a fireball shooting fire I really really like it this steel is a 1095 and 15 n 20 so the the shinier raised pieces that you see are the 15 n 20 and the the sunken darker spots are the 1095 and when Damascus steel is ground and then etched in acid you know it could have hundreds of layers but on the on the ground surface the acid is going to eat away the higher carbon steel with less protective alloy and then it's going to leave raised on the topography the lower carbon higher nickel content steel so that's kind of what you see. So that's the blade. And then Jesse did, uh, he did the grinding on this blade, including my sharpening notch. <laughs> that's the sharpener's choice feature on this knife. The proportions of the clip blade, I think, are perfect. You know, they're just. It is what a narrow, mean-looking clip-point blade should look like. 
it just the proportions are beautiful at least they are to my eye and then we we have Jesse's maker's mark stamped into the tang and then this handle is a brass guard followed by three spacers black red black and then this gorgeous peach piece of curly birch burl with one eighth inch brass pin holding it all together and lots of epoxy of course one rather attractive knot just for character lots of chatoyants in that birch isn't there so let's talk about this handle a minute if we look at it from the top you're going to recognize that Bark River Bob Loveless shape and this is a little elongated and frankly as I look at the knife the visual tension between knife and handle is just a little off it's too much handle um, frankly <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you I wanted lots of handle but what I didn't account for when I drew the handle was Jesse's garden spacer so uh, the handle could use about three-eighths of an inch less length I think see where the pinky is versus that point at the pommel. You know, we could be back here, it'd be just fine. Perhaps if the blade were a little broader, this handle length might not look quite so out of balance, but it does just a little. <clears throat> so, Jesse did the main blade grind, he did the acid, uh, the acid etch, and the guard design was mine, the whole knife design was mine, and then I got the handle down to finishable dimensions. So uh, I got the handle grinding down to the, to the final shape, and then Jesse took it through the grits of sandpaper and buffing wheels to get this gorgeous finish. And then it sat, uh, well, it was in my pocket most of the day last Friday as I was hanging out at Bark River. And I got it home Saturday, and I think Saturday, Saturday night before I went to bed. To the sandpaper on leather it went for a proper convex edge grind. And guys, we don't think of Damascus as being particularly great for forming and cutting. Get a little there. Did it get sharp? You can definitely feel the uh, the layers as they're revealed at the edge, but it's a sharp knife. Not that it's going to be one that gets used real hard. So why why did I want this knife? Well. I got a plan, believe me guys, I got a plan. I have a plan for a knife called the Everyday Bowie. And after seeing this one, and guys, this is a this is a knife that I'll never sell, I'll never give away. This is a, this is an evening in my life with my buddy Jesse that I'm probably never gonna forget. Not as long as I have this knife around. But this knife might be a step in a progression. You know, the first step was this blade taking shape in my mind and then down on paper and then with a Sharpie onto a piece of Damascus steel uh, made into this blade. And the handle comes to fruition. And guys, if I weren't making this knife for me, you'd see that shorter handle. You're going to see that shorter handle if I have anything to say about it. Uh, going to do something a little interesting where the handle meets the blade in the Ricasso and Choil areas. And uh, but my aspiration is that we will see something like an everyday Bowie produced.
probably in low numbers in sort of a mid-tech fashion by some knife maker in Escanaba. Not in Damascus, of course, maybe in A2, maybe in CPMM4, I don't know. But it's going to be a knife that, you know, this one is a 4 and 3 eighths blade, 4 and 3 quarters inch handle. <clears throat> maybe it'll be a 4 inch blade, 4 inch handle. Maybe just a tick broader than that, but not much. With a handle that lets you get right up to the blade. Hmm, who could make such a knife? Who could make such a knife? I don't know. Yes, I do. What do you guys think? it a lot. Man, it's just so great in that grip for your everyday tasks. Thought you'd like to see it. I sure like to show it. <laughs> Stay tuned, my friends. Watch the evolution of the everyday Bowie. Grace to you and peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the word. Uncle Jesse's everyday Bowie are sharp. <laughs>